All right, y'all. So I actually saw something interesting from Graham Stephan. He's checking out some TikTok financial advice. Now, we all know if you spend some time on TikTok, you know they, you know how TikTok advice can get. So you never know. It's, it's hit or miss. So we're going to see what's going on with this advice. If you don't know already, I am back on Patreon. We've been investing heavily. I invest every single day. Lots of different cryptos and things like that. So if you are interested in learning some of the things that I know, being associated with other whales and things like that in the community, and basically just learning about crypto overall, or learning about new opportunities to make passive income, more active income opportunities and all that stuff, be sure to join the squad. I'm trying to build a network of like-minded individuals who want to come together to actually figure out building generational wealth and we have people at all different levels man i'm not i'm not at the very very top echelon or anything like that i'm learning i'm, I'm from the bottom i'm 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 not anywhere near there anymore but i'm you know I'm, I'm proud of where i'm at and there's people below there's people above like i said we have people of all levels so come join the squad join the network and yeah let's get into it y'all we are reviewing money related financial topics on tiktok because i've noticed this trend where either the advice is insanely good, like some of the best advice you're ever gonna hear in your entire life when it comes to money, investing, business, and it's all for free, or it's complete crap. And sometimes it's really hard to differentiate between what's a steaming pile of uh, horse manure and what's gold. So today I wanna do just that as soon as you hit the like button and subscribe, and I'm gonna be watching some TikToks and letting you know exactly what I think. Enjoy. My most successful friends are like alcoholic, abusive dad, absent mom, you know, that kind of trauma like shapes people different, way different. That's hard to manufacture. You can do it, but it's risky. And that's the point, you know? And I literally recently have been telling guys like, hey, if you don't have the fire inside of you, get some credit cards and manufacture debt. And if you do that, <laughs> guess what? Now you have to perform. Or Yo, my man said, my man said, I've been giving people the advice that if you struggle performing, Put yourself in debt so you can ruin your life if you don't perform <laughs> like that. That's his logic. Like, this is absolutely not the way you want to go. If you str if you struggle with certain things, what you want to master first is discipline. You need to master your own emotions. You need to master your emotions. You need to be disciplined in the way that you move and the things that you do and how you use your time, how you spend your time. Because a lot of the bad habits and a lot of things that that kind of hold people back is fully in your control. Like you watching too many TikToks, you watching too much Netflix or something like that, you going out partying too much, drinking, smoking, you having an expense that's too high. All of these things are 100% in your control. And yeah, you may think, oh, but my life would suck without this. But I mean, does your life, do, do, would you prefer smoking every single day or would you prefer being in a position where you have so much money that you could actually do anything that you want outside of smoking that to, to make yourself happy. I mean, you could smoke if you wanted to, but you have so much financial freedom that you can actually do things that brings value to your life as opposed to just things that take away from it and devalue your life. So, I mean, yeah, th this is horrible advice in my opinion. Like, that, that, that was terrible. My man said, if you struggle, you know, get credit card debt because now you have to perform. Like, that's never going to work. Like, if, if you have real issues... Re like, bro, all, you, all you've all you just done is put yourself in a deeper hole to dig yourself out of, which is going to depress you even more. I mean, yeah. Or else there's genuine consequences right. to you not performing. I love in the background, you just hear someone saying, yeah, right, right. Like, it was going so well. And then it just nosedived. Like, when he's saying in the beginning about, uh, you know, a lot of people having some hunger because they didn't grow up with it. I found that overall, it tends to be true, but it could, it could split off in two directions. One is that they come from a really difficult household that's all they know, and they lean towards that because that's what they're comfortable with. Other people want to get really far away from that, and they want to do the opposite. So if their parents are bad with money, they want to be really good with money. If their parents are you know, working nine to five, they want to start their own business. So it really just depends on the individual. And it's not to say that everyone who comes from a rough upbringing is going to be successful, but you know, it can light that fire. But him going and saying getting credit cards and then manufacturing some crisis, going and driving up the bills, now you just have this insane pressure where if you don't succeed at this thing, now you failed. And then you also have a whole bunch of debt. You basically just dug yourself a deeper hole from what you were trying to escape from. So I think it sounds like good intentions, horrible delivery. I would never recommend somebody rack up debt 
just as a way to motivate themselves. If that's what you have to do to motivate yourself, I, I think you got bigger problems. So I would solve that first. <laughs> Yo, I love the way he's politely trying to say these things. He said, you gotta, if that's the extent you have to go through to push yourself, bro, you, you need some counseling. Like it's something else. It's something else going on in there. You you got you got a lot going on that you need to work out because it's 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 much much easier just to be disciplined. <laughs> like discipline is way easier than having to put yourself near death <laughs> to to perform because that is crazy. Like, but hey, I mean, there's people who like that, but you know, a lot of people aren't. A lot of people are not like that where you got to be in extreme situations to perform. A lot of people aren't very great under pressure or at least that type of pressure. Like I wouldn't manufacture extra pressure for yourself. That's weird. It takes less time to make a million dollars than it takes to make a hundred thousand. And the reason is you only think of solutions to the problems that you set for yourself and you start using superior vehicles to making money. Bro, what are you talking about? Listen to this first sentence. It takes less time to make a million dollars than it takes to make a hundred thousand. And the no, it doesn't. How? You got to make $100,000 to make a million dollars. You make $100,000. I'm pretty sure what he was trying to say, what he what he was saying is that to get from $0 to 100,000 is harder than it is to get from 100,000 to a million. And that that is factual. To to get your first $100,000, it is very difficult. When you have when you have $100,000, you could damn near, in cryptocurrency during a bull market, you could put $10,000 into a bunch of, into 10 different investments, and chances are one of them will make you a millionaire. That's just, you know, you know, that that's, that's the world that we're in currently at this point in time. It's a lot of opportunity in crypto. So, yeah, getting to that $100,000 in the first place, though, is a, is, that is the task. So, that is 100% true. I think that he's just trying to nitpick at that, but. Dollars first. Then you make $101,000, 102, 103, and then eventually a million. It's actually impossible to make a million dollars before $100,000 because that's not how numbers work. <laughs> that's kind of funny. I see what Alex Ramosi is trying to say here. It, w when you could figure out a way to make a million dollars, it comes so quickly. Because at a million dollars, in most cases, if you're running your own business, you're solving problems on a mass scale, you're serving a very wide audience. For a lot of people, the 100K is gonna come from steady employment, it's gonna come from something a little bit more safe, stable on a smaller scale. But when you find ways to leverage that, then all of a sudden a million dollars seems possible. Like for me, for the longest time, I thought a million dollars would be unachievable in my lifetime. I thought when I started off working as a real estate agent, like the top agents were in my area making over a million a year, but they had been doing this for like 30 years. So I kind of thought to myself, okay, if I stay in this career for 30 years and I build out all of this clientele and I really work this one area and I get really good at it and by the time they retire, I'll go in and like, you know, I could get some of their business and they're not gonna be around forever and you know, eventually I could take their, their, their spot, but, uh, when YouTube really started taking off, I realized, like, wait a second, it's a, it's a lot uh, easier to make a million than than a hundred thousand, just because you have the economies of scale. Like it took the same amount of time to make a YouTube video that reached a thousand people as it did to reach a million people. The work is pretty much exactly the same. So when I started seeing that, like, wow, you have you have the power of the internet, uh, you know, in your income and opportunity is really unmatched. I mean. This is actually huge. This is a huge perspective too. I love it. This is why I like actually hearing other perspectives as well, because just being in that mindset of solving a million dollar problem, it's, it's gold right there. Because if you're trying to solve a, make a hundred thousand dollars, that's like, that is you, the type of problems that you're even looking at is very minimal in the first place. So you're thinking small already, but if you're trying to get to a million dollars, even if you fail, you'll probably end up over over 100k because you're shooting for a million and you're 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 working on a million dollar pro problems million dollar ideas and things like that so you're thinking at two different levels somebody trying to get a hundred thousand dollars versus someone trying to get a million you're you're thinking at two different levels so i mean yeah at that the person thinking million in their mind is more than likely going to make it to a million quicker than the person thinking hundred thousand dollars like that that's their top goal and things like that so I, I see that there's there's no limit and that's what i realized like if you could do that on youtube the sky's the limit so i get what alex is saying but yet te technically you make a hundred thousand dollars before you make a million fine look at a bank 
right? What is a bank? What is also a bank? A yes, river, river bank. bank. Right. And what does the river bank do? It controls the flow. The flow of what? Water. The flow of the current, the currency, right? So if it's controlling the currency, it's also controlling the what? The flow. The flow of what? The cash flow. So what? Money moves like water. So if I understand where the water is going to go, I just have to position myself where the cash flow is going to be next, and I will get wet. Welcome to the big leagues, mother. What is this? What did I just watch? This <laughs> verbal diarrhea. Of, that doesn't. I feel like he's just throwing suave <laughs> talking at us. It's like, whoa, that's really deep thinking. Whoa. Yeah, he just, he just, he just overcomplicated something very simple. <laughs> Basically, all this man just said is, if you stand in front of where cash flows you're going to be able to get some of the money as the cash is flowing past. <laughs> like, that's basically what he's trying to say. So, oh, the big, the big, the next big opportunity when it comes down to sneakers is the new Jordans are coming out. If you're standing in line first, you'll be one of the first ones to get the new Jordans and resell them. Like, it's like just that was, that was the simplest thing in the world he just said. And he just made that way too complicated and almost confusing and, and nonsensical. Did, did, did you actually take away anything from that? Am I the only one just left perplexed? Like, yeah, ha, ha, ha kind of funny. That, that's all this is. Uh, I'll, I'll give this clip a two out of 10, okay? Two, because it's creative, but that's it. You're 24, you don't have any money, so why do you care about what stocks to get into? I'm not sure why you're sure of that, but- uh, How much money do you have? Uh, 100K plus. That's not a lot of money. You should worry about, you shouldn't worry about stocks. That's a waste of your time. You should specialize in something that nobody else specializing in that commands a very, a very large premium. Trying to turn 50, 100, 200 grand into, you know, fortune is, is a waste of time. If the best investors in the world right now are having a hard time making any money, how are you going to do it? He's not wrong. You know, the thing with Martin Shkreli is he's thinking on a, on a, a much bigger level than most people. Most people are stuck in a thinking that's, you know, I mean, that's because they're, they're talking about the stock market, too, which is the current issue. Um, the stock market, maybe, maybe, maybe that's good advice. But in terms of actually moving towards the future, crypto and things like that, this is still being established. This is like when the stock market first started and everything was super low before everything turned into the point where every like we had trillion dollar market cap stocks. Like that's what crypto is right now. Like crypto is there. And I believe that crypto is going to make it to where the stock market currently is way faster than it took the stock market to do it because tech advances way faster. So if it took this a certain amount of time for the stock market to get that far, we see how how far the tech industry moves and how quickly it moves compared to any, anything else. So we already know like, OK, so if crypto is tech. You know, it's kind of common sense that it's going to move faster than the stock market does once it's, it's more widely understood. And that's this is where the opportunity is. It's not widely understood. A lot of people see crypto as that meme thing with dogs where people are losing their money sometimes. It's like, no, crypto is a lot deeper than that. Crypto is actually technology. And most people don't even know that. They don't know that. They don't understand it. They just are here to try to make some quick bucks. That's it. Between zero and one. Martin Shkreli is playing on a game of one to a hundred. He's thinking so big, and he's not wrong in that case. If you have a hundred grand, you shouldn't try to think, how can I get a 50% return on my money every single year? I just want a hundred percent return on my money this year. It's not gonna work like that. Uh, you know. By the way, I just got a 200% return last week. Welcome to crypto. This is what I mean. This this is what I mean, the power of crypto. Understanding what an opportunity is. It actually goes into the clip before this that was poorly presented. But, I mean, you go where the money is going to be and you put your money there, then you can, you know, kind of get more money out. Like, I, that, that's just, you know. Even if you get lucky a few years in a row, which is statistically unlikely, most investors who aren't investing in broad index funds long term Dollar cost averaging end up losing money when they're day trading, when they're investing in individual stocks. The returns are horrible, terrible performance. So he's not wrong. Most investors, though, most invest most investors keep in mind. Like I hate those statistics because most investors are emotional. They don't have conviction to the things that they're investing in. They're jumping in things because they heard it from a friend or a friend of a friend and things like that. They watched one YouTube video so, and they're holding things not because they understand it and because of their own convictions. They're not looking at something like, hmm, this is the future. I believe in this for this reason. 
I'm going to hold this because I think that this is the future. They're not investing like that. They're investing because it's like, oh, this year I can get a 50% return. Then when the year starts closing out and they're losing money, they, they, you know, they, they don't, they cash out because they were wrong. They thought that something would advance way quicker than it was ever designed to advance. Like, if you are investing in something and the technology you're investing in is going to change the world five, ten years from now, expecting the crazy returns today would be insane. Like, why would you be expecting that? Like, so it's, it's managing your own expectations by having knowledge of what it is that you're doing in the first place, which most investors don't have. So investing isn't as complicated as people make it out to be. Investors overcomplicate their own investing experience. That's what makes it more complicated than it actually is. If you can control yourself, you have discipline, you'll be fine. But hey. So if Warren Buffett is even warning people, hey, we're probably not going to be able to get these 10 to 15% returns like we have in the past, and he's 10 to 15%, Warren Buffett, what makes you think that you could beat Warren Buffett over the next 10, 20 years? It's futile. So if you have 100 grand, I tend to agree with Martin that if you really want to do something big, you got to learn a highly specific skill and be really, really, really good at it. Buying an engagement ring with a loan. Red flag. It's a fake thing anyway. Diamonds, De Beers came up with that idea <laughs> that you have to spend like a third of your salary. Yeah, no, absolutely don't take out debt to buy a ring. That ring is going to go down in value the moment you buy it. It's like a car, except worse. You know, the diamond industry, it's, it's so arbitrary in terms of what they resell for. Like, used engagement rings, used, pre-owned, whatever you want to call it, sell for a fraction of their value. The, the upsell, the markup on diamond rings is insane. It's, it's perplexing how anyone would feed into this marketing thing, okay? I'd say it's really just the meaning behind it that counts the most. If your ring is 100 bucks or if it's 100 grand, it's the meaning behind it that means uh, something. It's not you know, taking out a loan for that. Take out a loan for a house, get yourself settled, don't take out a loan for a ring. Using student You also got to be with someone who's understanding. Because if you're with someone who's going to place the value of their ring, like, so if they would rather have a $100,000 ring as opposed to having a $100,000 home, and that, like, or they want both, and you're not in a position where you can afford both, and they're not understanding, you're probably with the wrong person. Like, it takes time to build certain things out, and there's also priorities. So as long as your love and commitment to that person is genuine and you all are committed to one another, you'll get to the point where you can have an insane ring. But even still, when you could, the right partner probably, I mean, if, if you all think the same and if you think like, uh, it's, it's like she probably wouldn't even want that money wasted on that because you all have so many other goals. Like she would probably want to take 10 vacations for the price of that, for the price of you just getting that ring. It's like, no, no, unless you got it like that where you got it to waste. There's always something else that she wants more than uh, uh, just a flex piece. Unless she's like, like some women value the flex piece though. But that that's actually a deeper problem. And if you have a person like that, I would say, you know, like, mm, I wouldn't be with someone like that person. But yeah. Student loans to go through college. Depends on the degree program. But if you studied it, it's something you're passionate about. Total green flag, but also work a little bit too, right? Eh, it depends on the degree and the amount of student loans. I'd say if you know what you want to do and that requires a degree to get there, and the degree makes sense from an ROI standpoint, and you could you know work the numbers to, to be in your favor, go for it. If you're going to college to figure out what you want to do, it's probably bad. You're probably going to go into it just as confused, and you're going to be in debt on top of that. It's going to make the situation worse. Getting a financial advisor. But make sure that they... Yeah, you can't, you can't, I don't think that school is necessary for most things that people want to do these days because they, they're going to be making, they're not going to be making enough money. Most people with degrees aren't making the money that they need to even pay off the debt that they have. So it's like, yeah, it's, it's, it's never, it's never really worth it. Usually like we have so many new ways to make money. The world is a different age now. Back in the day. Yeah. They had to incur debt. These days you don't like, it's a different world we're living in and if you're still getting information from the old ages, that probably explains why you don't have the results of that that's possible in a new age. They are a fiduciary. That's a good term. Here's the definition. I like him. I like him. You know, a fee-only fiduciary financial advisor. That way they're not going to be incentivized to sell you on certain funds because they get a bigger commission. Fee-only. 
just a flat B financial advisor. That's what you want. I'm going to be 140 years old. So I'm planning on 100 years. I have time to become a trillionaire. I know how many months I believe I'm away from being a billionaire because that's been a 13 year goal. I'm deep into private equity and growing companies and just my social media company alone last year popped a nine figure valuation. The goal of billionaire that I set that one up in 09 and I'm close, but no, I want to be a trillionaire. People just spout out whatever they want to for clips on TikTok. I swear the whole shorts algorithm and the TikTok algorithm is just say the stupidest stuff you can on camera that gets people triggered and they're gonna go comment and share these videos. It's so stupid. Um, who's, I don't get who's falling for it. Like I see something like that. I'm like, you could say whatever you want to in a clip and you could pretend like you're talking to someone. I could say, oh, you know, I'm gonna be a trillionaire one day. I'm gonna live to 500 years old. Oh yeah, don't believe me? Well, you know, and it's so stupid. So in this case, you know, social media evaluations, it's really hard to value social media because it's, it's mostly on the creator. There are very few channels out there where if you remove the creator, you don't remove 90% of the value with it. I got a very high valuation on my channel in 2021, but guess what? If I stop posting or you replace me with anyone else, that, that's going down a lot. Have you ever actually sat down and figured out your overall network? Uh, no, I never have, but I'll, I'll tell you what, if I stop working, how much money comes in? I stopped working a long time ago, and money keeps increasing. And the reason I talk about debt is because in 1971, Nixon took the dollar off the gold standard, and the money became debt. So then these communist school teachers tell you to get out of debt. And that's good advice for the average person, because debt will kill you. But debt is money to do. And so when I acquire an asset, I use debt. Robert Kiyosaki knew about just saying provocative things way before everyone else. Way before. <laughs> he is ahead of his time. He is probably 20 years ahead of his time. Look at where we're at now. We're saying the same things that he was saying 20 years ago. So, you know, he's been saying that, you know, they're, they're keeping you poor, they're teaching you the poor people things. Uh, he's been pushing gold for a very long time. I know gold hit an all-time high, but when you look at gold's performance versus like equities or, or housing or so many other things, it's just severely underperformed. He talked about inflation, the devaluation of the dollar. He's right on you know a decent chunk of things. I don't fully disagree with him, but at the same time, it's uh, let me say some stuff that's going to anger people online, and they're going to buy you know whatever. Pro I, he's selling products, uh, which is okay. Okay, you know everyone's selling something. Uh, you know I'm selling you to hit the like button to subscribe and to get some free stocks down below in the description because those could be worth a few thousand dollars and I'll get paid a commission on that. So that, that's my sale in the video. I'll get a commission, but you also get some free stocks that could be worth all the way up to a few thousand dollars. So that's down below in the description. But my point being is that uh, I've noticed in a lot of these clips, it's just a whole bunch of half truths. It's like, yeah, I kind of agree with that. Whoa, that's kind of extreme. But wait, he said this, and that's reasonable. I believe that. Whoa, that, that's wild. Uh, so it's like you throw a few truth bombs at him, and it's like one explosion over here. It's like, what? But there's some truth in there. And that's a lot of social media right now. Let's say I had to have $60,000. You go to a bank, and you say, I need $61,000. They then say, okay, here's your credit. This is what we'll give you or won't give you. Or do you have an asset that we could leverage against? I said, well, I have these paintings. What people don't know is, is anytime I did a painting, I would have it appraised. So when the bank seen it, they were like, okay, we'll give you $60,000. And here's the thing. Oh no, please don't take my paintings because I couldn't do it again. If you think about it, it's kind of a hack way. Infinite money glitch. Of selling your paintings. I could see if Alec Monopoly who has a history of selling art, has a history of- <laughs> Hold on, this man just said, no, don't take my painting. So he, he just paint a bunch of BS, get it appraised high and, what? Hold on, how's that, what? Being auctioned at a certain price. Could go to a bank and say, hey, I painted this thing, the floor is gonna be $30,000. It's not, it's not gonna be worth them less. The, the most recent comp is like 41. So it's not gonna sell below 30, let's just say. And I had this painting. I'll borrow against it, fine. But if I went to the bank and I said, hey, I did this painting. I got this appraisal and it says it's worth $15,000. The bank's not gonna say, all right, we're gonna take that as collateral because it's worthless. And that's because there's no sales history. Now, if I had history selling art at $20,000, $30,000 and I say, hey, here's all these real purchases. There you go, that's a comp. But if you don't have anything, then it's worthless, okay? Now, he could, in theory, uh, maybe have like some fake sales. You could go and put them up online, give a buddy 16 grand in cash, that buddy goes and buys the piece of artwork and he gets the money back. And it, but it's like, 
but that's illegal. You don't want to be doing that to defraud a bank so you could leverage your money. So I would say take everything you see on social media with a grain of salt, hit the like button no matter what, and comment down below. Let me know. Yeah. I mean, yeah, that, that, that was crazy. That was definitely crazy. But let me know what y'all think in the comment section down below. And since everybody is pushing everything, y'all already know. Check the description down below to join the Patreon, man. We got big moves being made in crypto right now, man. A lot of opportunities coming up. If you don't understand it, I'll break it down for you. Like, we'll dive into it. Any questions you have, we'll jump into it. Like, there's no stupid questions. I'm still learning a lot of things, too. But I can help you with what I know and what I don't. There's people that I know who knows. So, um, yeah, I'm constantly asking my mentors questions all the time. Like, if you saw my messages and my message history, I'm talking to somebody smarter than me every day. So, yeah, that, that's pretty much my life. I like to learn. I like to improve and become a better version of myself. So, let me know what you all think. Be sure to drop that thumbs up, subscribe, and turn notifications. And I will catch you all on the next one. Peace out.